I wouldn't necessarily subscribe to deterioration of our relations. This open exchange with my friend Mavlut Cevusoglu, the foreign minister of Turkey, was an exchange that set the record straight. I said, I repeated what are the Greek positions on issues that are crystal clear. And at the same time, I have submitted to, to the Turks an agenda, an economic agenda of 14, 15 points, which, if accepted, and I think I have already accepted to look at it, will start moving our relations in a better climate. But yet again, trying to make our relations better does not mean that Greece should not repeat what constitutes its long-time positions on issues of international law and international law of the sea. And I'll say, if you allow me to say, I'm not speaking about contentested issues. It's, it's just black and white. But it was a very public spat, wasn't it? Um, and yet I read that you get on well and the two of you went out for dinner afterwards. Now, is that true? And if so, uh, shouldn't those sort of disagreements have been uh, aired in private and not in public like that? Well, I have to say it is not something that I, I wanted to happen. I just repeated what is known to the Turkish side, the long-standing Greek positions, especially on issues of international law, on which, if I may be allowed to say, there cannot be many opinions. Something is legal or illegal. Something abides with international law or does not abide with international law. Having said that, of course, we had a very nice dinner uh, with my friend Mevlut Savusoglu, the iftar dinner, which is what follows a day of uh, Ramadan in the Muslim societies. And I'm glad that, uh, for, for participating in that dinner. It's good to hear you went for dinner. Um, on the substantive issues then, I mean, you've repeated the accusation against Turkey in terms of violating rights. Now, Turkey denies that it denies your rights uh, in the Aegean. It's proposed a, a summit on uh, maritime activity. Do you think that's a good idea? Well, I'll say, first of all, de denial is one thing, the truth is another. What I spoke about is uh, something that cannot be contested. contested. 400 overflights over Greek territory. There's not any clause in any international convention or international law that allows fighter plane from one state to fly over the, the territory of another state. Having said that, we have no problem with discuss with Turkey. We, we would like to move our relations forward. But you see, we have a problem there. In order to solve an exercise, we have to abide by the same rules. And the rules in the international community is crystal clear, is international law and international law of the sea. If we move with the same rules, we will solve this exercise. And if I may say, is rather easier. But uh, what's happening with Turkey is that Turkey does not accept those rules. It is like solving a school and exercise, and the one is using Euclidean geometry in which parallels exist, and the other side use elliptical uh, geometry in which parallels do not exist. You cannot solve that exercise together. So in order for us to solve our differences with Turkey, there is one golden rule, that Turkey should accept and abide by international law and accept and abide by UNCLOS, the Convention on the International Law of the Sea, which, by the way, is part of the European acquis. Then I think we can very easily move forward. And allow me to say that the Mitsotakis government in Greece would love that. The, the problem is that you're tackling these substantive issues, but the rhetoric is being cranked up, it seems. We have Mario Draghi as well uh, describing um, President Erdogan as a dictator. Now, d does that help progress uh, be made? Well, I I'm not the one that are going to make comments on, on uh, Prime Minister Draghi uh, uh, characterization. What I'm, what I'm saying is that uh, under the leadership of Prime Minister Mitsotakis, Greek, Greece is trying to find common ground with Turkey. But that common ground has to have a solid basis. And that solid basis in international law and international law of the sea. And if I may say so, that will be extremely helpful for both societies. Because what Greece is looking forward is on an amicable future with Turkey, the Turks, the Turkish society. We are close neighbourhoods, we can do a lot together, but we, this needs a very solid basis. Let's take another issue then uh, concerning international law, and that's migration. Um, there is an agreement here. Now, uh, Turkey says it has behaved decently. It accuses Athens of pushing back 
uh, thousands, tens of thousands of migrants over uh, the last um, few years. Um, we've got the summer coming up. And do you anticipate more problems here? Well, uh, I have to say that after March uh, and February 2020, in which tens of thousands of migrants were pushed towards the Greek border by Turkey in order to apply pressure to uh, the European Union, uh, Turkey is in no position to, 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 to dictate on us or, or gives us lesson on, on human right protection. And I will not go any further to that, exactly because, as you said before, what we're looking forward to is not a deterioration of our relations with Turkey. But let's set the record straight. You, I think everybody remembers the pictures of March and February 2020. On the migration issue, uh, what more help can the EU give Greece? Well, lots of things can be done. The first of all is the recognition by everybody that migration is a pan-European problem and it needs pan-European answers. And of course, we need the cooperation of Turkey of that, as we need the cooperation of neighboring states. And apart from Turkey, we have to appreciate the efforts of countries like Egypt that try to solve the problem without asking uh, uh, for money from the European Union and without trying to apply pressure or even blackmail the European Union. Uh, just finally, Minister, Greece is uh, opening up to tourism am amid the pandemic. Are you confident that you can do this in a, in a way that is uh, safe for visitors and for Greek people? Well, we will only do it if this is safe for the Greek society and it's safe for, for our friends and visitors that come to spend their vacation with us. But I have to say that the way that Greece has dealt with the pandemic is exemplary. And uh, please allow me to, to, to say just one more word the, or one more phrase. There is no way that Greece would have opened if we were not absolutely sure that we can protect the health of our citizens and the health of our visitors.